I always have to do a little adjusting anyway, so. Uh, I don't have a fan going anymore, so maybe that'll help. You don't have any fans going? No, I got used to uh, not having a fan, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've all been there. My character sheet. So. Me too. Okay, do you have your you have your character? Good, because I don't have your character sheets. I could just tell you anything. I have I have two hundred hit points, just so you know. Mm. Two hundred? Okay. I'll keep track of that. I know wish. It's my one level nine spell. <laughs> you know you know unlimited wish? Yep. Yep, it's a version okay. that you can use more than once per year. I am I'm see I'm Groomsh. Secretly. I didn't tell you that before. Oh, that's going to be difficult. Why? Yeah. Do the the kitties not like Groomsh? The kitties don't even know Groomsh. No, see, it's just that um, gods are bound to their plane of existence. Um, So if if a god were to travel um, to where you guys have gone, he would be torn asunder and like be scattered to the seven winds. But I'm God, so I'm 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 a God, so I'm saying it's not true and I'm fine. That's how that works. I'm <laughs> sorry, you have to roll a new God. <sighs> so we're we're gonna become gods. Boom. You might you never ascend know. to godhood. God of corn. You do re- that is actually possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said as I guess much. one of the, there are actually many um, ways this could go because I don't have any idea what I mean, you're doing. That too, and also like if you guys decide that you know your goal is going to be something other than what my idea was, I'm just going to roll with it. And if you guys want to try to find a way to become gods, sure, why not? You guys want to fuck every goat in the entire I was plane. just about to say, I hope you prepared lots of goats, because mm. this is getting hot and heavy in here. There there, there may be a goat. There there. Are there going to be some small goats for Eugene Fluffers, too? To fuck? Or... Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Fluffers needs uh, a goat for himself, too. You, you implying that my cat is molesting baby goats? Is that what you're saying? No, no, full grown. No, oh, just small. Yeah, your kitten small. is like just your ki- No, your kitten is just like jumping on the ass of the full grown goat and humping away. I can see that. Mm. Okay, I've changed my mind. This is the fan art I want. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll have to introduce ourselves for John Paul. Yep. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Funk Dog Plays Volume Three. Yes, right? We're doing a number three. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So I am Sean. I'm your your uh, dungeon master, host, a guy with a giant-ass beard. And by the way, that means the beard is giant, not that it's on my ass. Allegedly. Why not both? Let's introduce the players now. Yeah. One uh, player, please introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, I'm Jade. Um... I'm playing Cornobi, the sentient ear of corn. She's a fighter druid. Go back and watch the uh, first two episodes if you don't know who she is by now. Yeah. Lazy bum. Mm. She is a sexy ear of corn, by the way. That was that is her actual race is sexy corn. Mm. So you just look at the title card and decide for yourself if you think she's a sexy corn or not. I I really hope that we will now with this game that we're playing inspire, inspire corn a, fetishes a new fetishes in people yes mm. corn among 
among many others that are yet mm. a mystery. And, and really, it rhymes with porn. How can corn porn not be a thing? Well, there's that Chuck Tingle story that inspired the whole thing. So I know, but there should be more. Mm. There should be an entire section of adult film stores where you just go and it's just like, oh, there's hardcore ass fucking. Oh, there's, you know, MILFs. Oh, there's corn porn. An I mean, entire four foot section of shelving. Come on, there's there's millions and millions of videos of people shoving corn up their asses. So if mm. I mean if you don't count that, I guess that's because you're an elitist. I guess that's why they call it cornholing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We can spend an hour just with that, I'm sure. <laughs> we really could. But who are you, strange lady? Strange lady, that's, that, that's basically everything you need to know. My name is Kerstin, and I play Skywalker, the ranger. Azamar ranger, level 9. Uh, and as far as I know, I'm currently unconscious. So do with me what you will. I guess. Well, it's not what I'm going to do with you. It's what that goat is going to do with you because it knows what you want and it's going to get pre pre like preemptive revenge. I've never been this moist in my life. <laughs> okay. Um, to set the scene, you guys had um, been bamboozled, I think, mm. by the Harpers. And they had bamboozled themselves into thinking that you were like the most elite Zentarum agents on the planet, and they thought they were striking a huge blow to organized crime by banishing you from the their plane of existence forever. Mm -hmm. And you woke up. Well, I should say, uh, Kornobi woke up. Yep. And I saw a lion. And, yep. Giant lion guys. Now, from your perspective, Get it really, the, the sun's behind them, so, and you're looking up di from directly on the ground. And you can tell, they look to be, you can't really tell, like, anywhere between six and eight feet tall. They're big. Mm. They are extremely humanoid. Basically, kind of reminiscent of, like, the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Well, most of the, you know, mm. interpretations of that character. And they're dressed in, like, a uh, city guard outfit. Mm. And they're all just sort of standing around the three of you. There's four of them, by the way. Mm. And they're standing around the three of you, kind of like in a circle. And they're looking down with expressions. It's, it's kind of hard to tell because you've never had to read a lion man's expression. Mm. But it looks like they're just curious. So if I'm laying on the ground looking up at them, does that mean I can see their junk? They are wearing pants. Okay. So there's no I told you, they're wearing like city guard outfits. Okay. Not no loincloths or anything like that. No, no loincloths. These guys are they are dressed like basically they're medieval cops, is what it looks like. Mm. You know, they're the type of guys who would get slaughtered by the dozens right before the hero shows up and saves the day, mm. you know? And since you've woken up, they're sort of looking at you a little bit expectantly. Um, they're mm. just sort of like wondering what you are going to do, you strange person, you, who just teleported in from a different reality. Okay, so I'm going to stare at them and say, what the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice one. Good way of putting it. Um, okay. The one of them that seems to be, like, in charge, his, you know, uniform's a little bit, like, nicer looking. Mm -hmm. A dapper gentleman? Not quite dapper, but it looks like he might be a sergeant or something, you know. He's, like, obviously in charge of the other three, but at the same time. He's not like a, like a nobleman or anything, or or a wear dapper or anything. But he sort of chuckles at your at your pont and says, and like glances over at the other three and says, "Well, Vinto, 
I, uh... I owe you 20 bucks, what can I say? I don't know how you always guess it. <laughs> and the, the other one just sort of chuckles at this, because he just won 20 bucks from his boss. He looks down and goes, Ah... Uh, I suppose I could ask the same question of you, considering, uh, you're the one who appeared out of nowhere. Well, yeah, that wasn't my fault. Uh, okay, fine. F fuck it, whatever. Where are we? You're on the gate plateau. Yeah, okay, uh, which plane of reality are we on? Because I don't know where we are now. Um, this one. Yeah, does it have a name? Would I know it? Do any of them? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, which one are you looking for? Oh, uh, we always just called it the Prime Material Realm. Yeah, that's not really going to help. I'm pretty sure a lot of planes of existence call themselves something like that. Well, okay, fine, fine, whatever. Hi, I'm Cornobi. Um, who are you? He looks down at you and says, I I'm Sergeant Chur, though. Of the welcoming committee. Chorzo. Chorzo. C H O R Z O. That's how I I wrote it. Okay. For a minute, I was going to have all of them be taco meats, and then I changed my mind. Hmm. Okay, so, so welcoming committee, that means you were expecting us? Well, we haven't had anybody come through in a while, but. That's pretty much what happens up here. People pop into existence. They're usually very confused. We bring them down, let them talk to the professor, get them set up. Yeah, you know, sometimes maybe set them up with some job training. Maybe, uh, you know, a potential employer that has some skills. You know, get their new life going. Okay, then. Um, I'm going to prod Sky with my foot to try to wake her up. Do I? I would like to think you do, because by this point, you yeah, you, you'd probably be in the process of awakening anyway. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to poke you in my foot. Like, Sky, look, we got freaking lion people talking to us now. I guess I'm going to blink and uh, sort of try to try to wake up from this uh, haze that I'm in and uh, look up at Kronobi and then over to the guards and I, I believe I don't show an immediate reaction because I'm just what the hell is even going on I'm just uh, silent for a moment here trying to, to process everything around me well sure though notices and uh waves at you, and uh, says, well, good morning to you! Uh, I, I take a deep breath, shake my head, and uh, ra raise a hand a little tentatively, wave back and say, morning. Did you sleep well? I wouldn't call it sleep, to be honest. Oh god, my head. Well, you're lucky. Continental breakfast is still going on. Okay, if there's food, count me in. Oh, I try to get up. Having a little trouble. My head is killing me right now. One of them, which hasn't actually spoken yet, uh, actually reaches out a, a paw to um, give you a hand getting up. I give you a paw getting up, whatever. Um... Look up, look, if there look are any furries him. listening, that sounded dirty as hell. <laughs> I like furries. Um, can I... Yeah, any furries probably just now think we just got really, really dirty. But no. Oh, I'm sure the furries are going <laughs> to love this campaign. We have a Give huge... A I believe we have a huge furry following. So, I like to believe. Mm. Yeah, but that was a, we just a furry double in the window. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the handsome Mr. Fluffer's story to be written. Um, <laughs> oh God. Uh, let me just, uh, I know you, you're setting this up to be really, th these guys are really nice and all. I just want to do, a guy I can't know that, so I want to do an inside check um, on the guy holding out his paw. And that's 
<laughs> Forget it, six. <laughs> I think it's a okay. Mm. I assume. Okay, so uh, you, you honestly have not you have not gained any insight from this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I figure, you know, whatever, and I, uh, I reach out, take his paw, and let him pull me up. And I'm probably going to sway a little on the spot. Okay, um, could you tell me something about, um, Asimar? Mm hmm No, because inherit- I have no idea. Yeah? <laughs> Let's try this. I can take out Polo's guy if you need me to look stuff up. <laughs> we can make up our own canon. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Um, are As- I know Asimar are slightly divine. Yeah. Um, are they inherently magical? I, I think that's it's not actually a rule. If you uh, recall Sky's backstory, mm-hmm. she is basically almost purely divine. So I don't know, make of that okay, what you will. But okay, but not not like anything arcane. Arcane, no, no, not really. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, in which case, uh, he just helps you up. You get to your feet, and um, is uh, Kornobi going to get up, or just going to sit there admiring legs? No, I'll stand up and uh, reach into my bag. I figure I still have one pizza left, so I'll take a slice of that to munch on as we're uh, walking to find this breakfast that he told us about. How how, how those legs, though? Those legs good? Yeah, I, good? I'm a strong, you know, I, I work out. Um, so no, figured... They're not yours. The the, the ones oh. you're admiring. Oh, their legs. I don't know. How are their legs? Do I need to roll <laughs> perception to see how their legs are? I mean, I know you're sexy. You can. So. Okay. Um, uh, should it be, I guess, perception or investigation? I'm going to say um, investigation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's investigate those legs. Um, plus zero. <laughs> Botch. <laughs> Okay, um... Poke your eyes while, out with your pizza. While it, <laughs> no, okay. While checking out the legs to see exactly how sexy they are... Mm-hmm. Um, they see me doing it? You, in, you instead actually are staring at uh, a little, like, discarded tree branch. It's, like, off to the left. Mm. And... That's a you, sexy you decide that that's a sexy ass branch. Well, yeah, I can talk to plants, so I can talk to that branch if I wanted to. It's dead. Oh. This is like necrophilia oh. for you. Oh my god! So you're a little grossed out by the fact that you're turned on by this dead thing. That's mm. so sad. Yeah. Well, I'm still gonna walk over to that branch and try to talk to it. Hey, so it. sad. <laughs> for Novi's first crush, and it's dead already. Hmm. <laughs> What happens? Well, I'm sure the branch doesn't talk back to me, even though I can oh. speak to plants. Oh, oh gosh. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, it, it's long dead. Mm. <sighs> and, uh, at sure, though, actually looks over at, um, uh, Sky. Just goes, Is that, um, uh, normal? For her? Absolutely. You know, I've I've honestly stopped questioning anything when it comes to Kornobi. But she's uh she's uh she's all right. You know? That's all I can really say. It's got a weird name though. Why Kornobi? It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, at, at this point, by the way, um, remember, Dave went with you. He was yep. teleported, too. Yes. And Mr. Fluffers. Dave gets up. He has actually been awake virtually the entire time and just listening to the conversations. And now he actually gets up and um, inquires about the Continental Breakfast. And Chorzo just laughs and says something to the effect of, you must be mad. It's after two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. So is there a breakfast or is there not a breakfast? Apparently not. 
Hmm. Well, if you'd, uh, if you'd woken up earlier, maybe. Okay, so is there a lunch, then? Possibly. Maybe an early dinner. Uh, okay, what are we waiting for? Yeah, well, want to get right to it, then. We head down the, uh, back end of the plateau, then follow the Stick River. We can get to, uh, entry point. I'd say... Hmm. I'd say probably about about an hour or so. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean, what else? What else choice do we have? Yeah. I don't oh, know. no, you could hang out talking to sticks. Yeah. This guy's looking over at Kenobi, but like, maybe, is that, do, do you wanna? Is that? Is no, that I, I slapped the you? stick. That, that, that stick's being a jerk. Let's go find some food. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's go with these nice kitties. Mm. All right. Um. Um. I'm just gonna hang back for a second and 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 uh, go up to Dave and uh, and say, "Hey, Big D, you all right?" I'm. I think I'm okay, but I'm really more worried about the fact that this isn't even the weirdest thing that's happened to me this week. Uh, uh, well, I've seen some stuff in my life too, so I guess you're not alone in that. I once took a wrong turn and ended up in the belly of an alien god. I was on my <laughs> way to the student union. <laughs> a what? An alien but, god. You know what? Let's maybe we can discuss this over over dinner. I'm pretty sure we escaped using a magic duck. I think so. A magic duck? It was a long time ago. That story sounds stupid. Don't mind her. Mm. Yeah, she's a, she's, a, she's a dirty stick talker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run back and grab that stick and take it with me. Mm-hmm. I thought so. <laughs> I can find uses for that stick. Congratulations, you now have a stick plus one. Yep, I'm adding it to my inventory list. The plus one comes from the love you feel. Mm -hmm. When it's deep inside me. <laughs> Very. Mm -hmm. No other bonuses? Uh, increased karma? When wielding it, she gets a plus one bonus against attempts to charm because... You can't take her love away from the stick. No. Even though I think this is shaping out to be a really abusive relationship. Well, it's a dead stick. She's just using parents. the stick. No, I think, yeah, and the stick's just giving her the cold shoulder. Mm. Well, she's just using it. Yeah, they both deserve each other, to be honest. Really? Mm. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, um... I wanna, on the way there, I wanna hear the, okay. uh, the story... The alien god story, but we don't have to do that like in in real time. It's just Dave can just tell me okay, the story. Okay, so Dave tells you a story about how he woke up in the belly of an alien god, how they ended up somehow getting transported to a desert, how um, he uh, he rode a party horse, um, robbed a merchant, and then was cruelly abandoned in an orc camp. By people who claim to be his friends. But he turned that frown upside down and became king of the orcs and converted them to a new religion. Turning them away from Grumpf. Grump, so how did he Grumpf, 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 Grumpf. How did he get out of that? How, how did he get out of it? Yeah, what happened after that? I assume he was just randomly teleported. By the random teleporter well, that well, really, hangs out? Guys, Guys, what happened was, um, I spent a long time as, as orc chief, and I, I was really quite happy there. And then I went to bed in my hut one night, and I woke up, and I was in Faerun, and I was the son of a nobleman. And I was about to be hired to lead two ladies on an expedition to a ruin. 
It's just I woke up like that. It's kind of normal now. Yeah, it sounds to me like you hallucinated that whole adventure. No, no. Um, the bit where my soul was torn out of my body by a demon from the depths of hell and turned into a ghost that could type on computers, that might have been a dream, though. Hmm. And definitely the part where I showed up to class with no pants on. No way, that was real. It happens yeah. to all of us. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty real. That's why there's, there was a sign on my dorm room door that said, No pants, no good. That's good so advice. I remember pants. Hmm. Yeah. I believe you. Carnoby looks down and realizes she's never worn pants. <laughs> so, they, you really didn't know what they were going to do to us? Well, no, but generally I find that friendly people tend to be friendly and they seemed friendly and they like if they were going to kill us they could have done it while we were asleep and instead they waited till we woke up and they didn't even take any of our stuff so i figured it would be okay this guy's just silent for a while she's trying to process this 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 guy i hope he's already <laughs> moved on <laughs> you went on an entire adventure with him. You should know him well by now. He's your best friend. He sure is. I mean, Cornobi <laughs> and, and Dave both are. I don't want to, like, set, set Sky up to be, like, Vinny 2.0. She's not like, oh, let's be friends. But uh, she generally likes this guy. So. It's just natural for you as a player to love everyone. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to end up like that, but I guess it's sort of true. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you're just gonna, you know, do the walking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's sort of a once you, you know, the plateau is a, like a grassland area, and as you like get off it, it's uh, more grassland. You kind of wonder. Uh, actually, um, I want um. Cornobi uh -huh. to give me a nature check. Uh, okay, I've got a plus zero to that, strangely enough, even though okay. it seems like I'd have more. 19! Natural 19. Yeah, you are struck, actually. But the fact is, all rolling prairie. Where the fuck did that stick come from? There are no trees here. Hmm. I'm gonna roll Ooh. investigation on my stick. <laughs> okay. 13. Um, it looks natural, but at the same time, it looks like it has been handled a lot hmm. and slightly shaped. Um, so it, it maintained its natural look, but it has been definitely molded in a way that, uh, you, you can't really figure out what it is about it, but it definitely seems like artificed. Does it look like a dick? No. Oh. Damn. Can we say that it is though? So it, it's actually like a magic wand or something, and I just thought it was a dildo. You you can try fucking it later <laughs> on. Mm. You have the privacy of your own home. I can't. So do I need to roll like Arcana or something to try to if I if I think it's a magic item, is that what I roll? Yeah, I'd go with Arcana, yeah. Okay. It's still a plus zero, but Arcana. Yeah. Nine. Yeah, um... You guys don't know? You just do not... You can't figure it out. You get, you, you have your suspicion that it might be magic. Hmm. But... Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn can to I Sky just... and yeah. say, uh, Hey, Sky, I think there's something weird about this stick. Can you look at it? Uh, uh, I take the stick. Twenty-one. Whoa. Okay. Get, um, my eyes get super wide. <laughs> you know what this stick <gasps> is. Yeah, and you are not exactly sure what it is, but you can definitely tell that this staff has some serious magical properties to it. You don't know what they are, but you can tell it has like every sign of being like a heavily enchanted item. Hmm. 
you just are you're just not it's not your area of expertise yeah so you just it's like kind of like um if you uh you can see a car and know it's a really nice car but you wouldn't be able to tell someone what the horsepower rating was or something you know because you're on a an mm. mechanic you know that type of thing you can tell is something fucking magical with dicks so we need to find a professional wizard to I'll, look uh, at I'll hand it back to Kronobi and say um, until we find somebody who can tell us what this is don't point it at anyone okay um, can I point it at myself please don't okay just, fine just, uh, just, just I'll, keep I'll put it, it in my bag it, is it is it a small thing she can put in her back? I thought it was staff. Or, or is it is it staff size or is it dildo size? Halfway between, it's roughly uh, I would say about two and a half, three feet long in that neighborhood, but a yard long. Okay, well I have a scimitar, so I'll just put it next to that in the same uh, loop on my belt. Point it down. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I don't know where well, up and down is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanna real quick. Can I address Sergeant Chorso? You may. Um. I do not bring up his floating accent, though. He's really <laughs> he's, embarrassed he's, about it. His accent is perfect. Um, I just wanna carefully walk up to him because I don't know the uh, you know, the protocol. If it's okay to just yeah. uh. Just stay a couple steps behind, and uh, ah, I, I don't think I have heard his name. Before. Well, 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 basically, guess... there's one. Think the Chorzo is in front of you. There's one behind you, and one on the other side. They're not like acting like you're prisoners. They're almost yeah. acting like they're like guarding you. You know, just to make sure that nothing happens to you. Um, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I have a question. That's a very good thing to have. A question. Yeah, I think... Better than a cold, or a broken arm, or, you know... I, co I completely Herpes. Agree. Yes. Oh, my God. Those herpes. Um, can I... People wouldn't mind it if you called them happies instead. They'd, they'd be excited about it. I made, I made love with, with that chick. Yeah, she gave me happy. You know, I'm fully in favor of that. That sounds like a great idea. Lovely, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, why are you so nice to us? Why are you doing any of this? Is my question, really. It's my job. Who? I mean, yes, I, I, I can see your, uh, your guards. Who is, uh, who is your, your boss? Who is your boss? I don't know if that's the right question, but I'm gonna ask it. Well, I mean. When you get down to it, I guess it'd be the professor. He runs the welcoming committee. I mean, when you think of it then, I mean, then again, that's a, a subset of the government. I, I suppose the president? I don't know. The president? Oh. I mean, some people say that the, the leader of the parliament have more power than he does, but I see it as a multi-tiered system of checks and balances to prevent any one to uh, body of the government from having dictatorial control. Uh, Representative democracy is not the best way of uh, doing government. It's just better than every other way we've tried. Is this uh, the president or any of the... What was it? The parliament? Yes, yeah, the parliament. The parliament. Representative of the people. Are any of those people anywhere nearby? Like in a let's say, in the nearest city or anything, or... Well, I figured they'd be in the capital now, wouldn't they? And that's far away from here? Well, it's not particularly close. Okay, so we don't have to worry about them right now. That's what's my... <clears throat> you know... Well, most people don't have to worry about the president. You see, he's busy running the government. He's not going to stop by and go, you're buying that packet of sweets wrong. No, it's just, you know, when you're adventuring for years, you become suspicious of authority figures. They usually... It's a whole... it's a whole thing. I don't... it's a whole thing. 
Well, you can't trust your elected representatives. Who can you trust? Have you been out much? Like, in the world? Oh, we have traveled. This I've been to, uh, been, been pretty far north, but all the way up to Flail. Flail. Don't want to go much further north than that, though. <laughs> no, I doubt if you want to live. I envy you. Yeah, um, where, where we come from, it's usually a good idea to, well, to be wary of anyone, really. So forgive, forgive us if we seem a little suspicious, I guess. We've, we're usually living in constant danger, so. Just remember, we, we, you can't survive your whole life with suspicious minds. You can survive without one, is what I learned. You must be from a very unpleasant place. Yes, I sure am. You had a nice bar. I'm not talking well, that about that, but yes. Elvin was pretty chill for a while, but then the whole thing happened, and uh, I guess what it taught me is never, never get your hopes up. Oh, well, you know, we're kind of used to these sort of sob stories. Man, a lot of people don't end up here on purpose, you know? Is what it... happens when you're at the end of the plug hole of the universe? I, I imagine it's pretty exciting to always get new visitors and hear from all these different places. Well, it can be. I mean, you're the first one in about seven months. Me kind of boring work. Hanging out on the plateau, playing cards. Waiting. And then, like like seven months ago, with, a, with an elf. Can't do anything with an elf. Had to wait for the elf to show up. So we, we we just sat there playing cards with some very confused elves, and we we're like, oh, we can't even talk to you. It's in the contract. Hmm. Will we get to meet any of these elves? <laughs> I guess your 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 job has its ups and down upsides and downsides. It sounds like. Oh, I was so excited to see you. What a really boring season. <laughs> and just between you and me, I think Vindo cheats at cards. Which which one is that? He gestures with his head to the one in the back. I look over, then look back and say, "Yeah, he he seems a little scummy." I whisper that. Oh, this, he, he he's actually. A very nice man, but he doesn't take losing very well. Okay, so I guess I'll jump in and say, uh, so what is there to do around here? Are you asking me what there is to do in the entire world? Well, we'll start with where we're going. After we eat, what is there to do? Oh, entry point. Nice little town. Um, it was mainly established, you know, for people like you, new new people. Uh, there's a... There's some shops. There's a hotel. Um, there's a... A what? Oh, uh, it's a, a hotel. It's a place where you give people money and they let you sleep in a room. So it's a tavern. Uh, it's like an inn. An inn, yeah. Yes, but it doesn't have a tavern in it. Well, that's well, bullshit. That's summer. <laughs> but it has a swimming pool. A what? And a gym. Yeah, but there's no beer. A what? Uh... You'd have to go to the Dancing Dagger Inn if you want to get a beer. Oh, there is a tavern. Oh, good. Well, of course there is. Oh, you never know. We had a really nice tavern back where we came from. You know, somehow I would always fall asleep drinking and uh, wake up in my bed. It was pretty amazing. It was magical. Yeah. Ah, none of that here. Oh, fuck. There's also a money changer, because uh, your coins are probably, you know, foreign. And, of course, there's a temple of a Torah. Uh, no, I was just, I was going to ask, because I'll, I'll reach into my bag take out a platinum piece. Uh, how much is this worth here? He looks at it, squints his eyes, makes a big show of studying it, and goes, Roughly one platinum. 
Okay. One platinum is worth one platinum. Well, that's, that's convenient. convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> oh, it, it, oh, it is one of the uh, most common forms of coinage. Oh, good. So we don't have to relearn currency. <laughs> Cornovi is very opposed to learning new things. I am. <laughs> She's getting sexier. Yeah. Okay, that's basically all I wanted to know for now. So we can just walk if Kronobi doesn't have anything no, further. No, I want to see what happens when we get there. Okay. But I'm going to keep you, chatting um... with Sergeant Chorso because uh, he, uh, he, I, I really like him. And I was just, uh, okay. you know, casually, let's just small talk. You know, with, just small talk, like, talk about the maybe weather. Maybe compliment like the color of his fur or something like that. Okay. And his legs. Way, they're, they're, yeah, their fur is almost uniformly... A uh, a bright yellow, golden yellowish orange mix, depending on the areas, you know. Areas. Oh 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 God! One more thing, I want to ask him. Okay. Um, I hope this is not this is not offensive to you, but what what's what are you what are your people called? Your race, you know. You know what I mean. You mean other than people? Like, is everyone? like you here like does everyone look roughly like you oh no would hardly be a, a dumping ground for every other plane of existence if we if everyone oh. looks the same now would we of course of course but like native to your uh, world is only you fluffy people or well, there's, o there's only uh there's only two sentient races that they are native to this world that actually evolved here. And, uh, we're not the dragons. Oh, there's dragons. Well, there were. There's one now, I think. Pretty damn sure there's one. Otherwise, they don't know what raised that farm. <laughs> Might have been a very foul-tempered sheep. <laughs> breathing fire. But I doubt it. I wouldn't put it past those sheep. We gotta find that sheep, <laughs> but and recruit him to the party. So I guess he's not gonna give me a race name. Is that what we're getting at here? <laughs> he's actually deliberately giving you a hard time. <laughs> oh, okay, but there is he's a race been name. So bored, he is he is legitimately just fucking with you right okay, now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking uh, but um, short, do a shortcut and do a persuasion. Wait, um, okay. <laughs> He was going to tell you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now he. Is. But now he just thinks it's funnier not to, and to keep avoiding the question, and he's gonna avoid the question the rest of the trip. No, I'm gonna g <laughs> give Kronobi a pleading look, like, take over, please. <laughs> Sexy okay, car. I'm gonna roll my eyes and. Uh, you know, it's, uh, okay, fine. Because I love you. Oh. Um, I'll look over at um, Chorzo and say. Can you just tell her what the race name is, please? I mean, come on. We're going to find and out I've anyway. Plus, I got a plus nine to persuasion, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. Fifteen. All right. He sighs, and he's like, oh, you know, because the sigh itself says, I was having fun. <laughs> said... That's what the sigh tells you. It's a very, yeah, it's a very I, emotive I... sigh. <laughs> yeah, Cornovi's just kind of bored and waiting to get there and yeah. just tired of his shit. And he goes, Well, we are called Gallops. So he he, he breaks down and tells you that uh, his race are known as Gallops, and that they are, in fact, one of only two sentient races to be native to this world that anyone knows about. Um, them and dragons. And that every, and even though the world is pretty well populated, everyone is either uh, teleported here from a different plane or some ancestor of theirs did. Um, hmm. Sky briefly debates asking him if people can t theoretically be sent back, but she thinks better of it because she doesn't actually want to know. It's a brief struggle. I don't know if Kronobi wanna wants to ask that, but 
Nah, Cornobi adjusts quickly. Yeah. I mean, she kind of misses the tavern yeah. from the old place. Yeah, but, I figured. Um, so yeah. we're not going to have any problems here. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. You make it to Entry Point with an E, the name of the town. The, in fact, the entry to it is across a bridge because you've been on one side, the north side of the uh, Stick River, and uh, the entry point is directly south of it. So, you know, there is a bridge over the river which leads basically directly into the front gates of the town. As long as you guys don't have anything else that you want to um, fart with, then we they, they brings you basically to when you go in, there's uh, a guardhouse like right next to the, the front gate. Gates are wide open, but there's a guardhouse right next to it, which is pretty big. It looks like it's a guard barracks almost. And they go through it's just like city streets. Um, it looks like it's a fairly decent sized city, like slightly less big than Alvin was. You know, or maybe a little bit more rustic looking. But he, they lead you rather quickly to a a really big building. It doesn't really almost seem like it belongs in this uh, town. Because everything else is basically made of wood. Except for this one building is made of stone. And it looks almost like like an, like an old school uh, university. A big gray building um, with a few parapets. You know, and there is a giant double door which stands um, partially open. And there are, it looks like probably more ceremonial guards than anything else. Are they just leading us in there? Is yep. anybody saying anything? Or? The the guard, you know, salutes. Gallops, you know, Chorzo. Gallop guards? Um, no, actually, they are human. Oh. There's a guard at each side, and they are human. One is, uh, you know, kind of like uh, tall and relatively skinny. The other one is short and also relatively skinny. Um, but they're definitely humans and they are in sort of like dress uniforms. You know, whereas the, the gallops who picked you guys up, they are in very functional guard uniforms. These guys are in ceremonial guard uniforms, almost like beef eaters. You know? You can stab through. That stuff. Yeah. They, they look like they are very um, vulnerable to stabbing. But it also, considering you're surrounded by gallops, it might not be a good idea. Hmm. No, I wasn't, I wasn't Were planning we to. Are we supposed to be thinking about creating chaos <laughs> that, in the city as soon as we step into it? <laughs> let's, let's wait a few. Let's get the food and find out what's going on. Alright. So basically, you throw through Alright, then, um, I guess... You do have a, a bit of an option. Um, you can meet the professor now, or alternately, we could give you some food, and then you can meet the professor. I guess Kornobi's hungry? Mm, yeah, I'm always hungry. I'm looking over to Dave, see what, what he... You're hungry? Eh, eh, I could eat. Okay, maybe, maybe we should... Mr. Fluffers needs some pizza. Yeah, sure. Get some of our strength back to. All right. Um, he leads you off in a room to the left, and it's a dining room, mm. and there's just not one table, but it's like a lot of tables. It almost looks like it's just a bunch of like circular tables, each one with like five or six chairs around it, and there's a few people sitting there um, at different tables eating. And he leads you guys to all human and an empty. T um, no. Different uh, all kinds there's, of stuff. Uh, there's, you know, a few these background people. There's a couple of humans. There is definitely an orc and uh, a couple of dwarves. You, you definitely can spot a halfling. It's a pretty diverse group. Okay, is there a free table? Yeah, there's a free table. And he guides you to it and uh, tells you that he he's gonna let the uh, the kitchen staff know that there's another person here because he kind of explains how the people who dine here um, are mostly city employees 
It's kind of like the city employee cafeteria, basically. And they will come here at set times. Like their lunch break is at, let's say, 10. And they will be at the cafeteria at 10. They staff is expecting them and will have their meal ready for them. But since they weren't expecting you, they don't have a meal ready for you. So he's going to go and tell them to send somebody out to take your order. That was completely mm. pointless flavor text, but I felt like saying it. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Um, so when we, you know, eat, they are, the guards are going to leave us alone? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, um, or are uh, they going to stay with us? No, the, the three, like, underling guards are gone. Once you got into got to this building, they sort of peeled off and like went off to do their own thing for a while. Chorzo is still with us. Yeah, Chorzo is, st is uh, still with you. And in fact, before you guys even got a chance to eat, we, when he went to the kitchen, he came back with like just a roast beef sandwich. And mm. he's chowing down on that. And oh, so he's staying with us during the meal. Yep, you're just going to sit there, hang oh, out. Because he's going to have to lead you to where you're going afterwards. So he's just like, yeah. Nice. Sit no, there. I, was, I was worried about losing him, you know. Mm. He's no, no. His, his voice is way too hard on my throat for you to lose that easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, anyway, within a few minutes, a guy from the kitchen comes out who is, um, interestingly enough, a Kenku. Hmm. I was going to ask when, when our first Kenku show up. You, we have we have Kenku sign. Yes. And this Kenku asks you, you know, like, you know, what you want, and, uh... Is it a peacock? No, it's just a, uh, it's actually a mottled brown color. Mm. Like, different shades of brown sort of watch you. It's not the prettiest Kenku you've ever... You basically, you don't want to fuck this Kenku, is my point. Okay, you so know is that. he looking for our orders, or...? Yeah, pretty much. Just like, you know, I mean, we can just say you order and eat if you like. I want to see, do you know in this world what a pizza is, Mr. Kenku? Mr. Kenku. And Mr. Yeah. Kenku um, kind of looks a little bit offended, and he mm. goes, but of course. Okay, good. Um, I'll take two. One for me and one for the cat. Um, what size? What toppings? Um, you, you cannot just God, say it's pizza. It's an Italian chef. It's a fucking Italian chef. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a three meat one for me, and I'll uh, look at Mr. Fluffers, and uh, he, I assume he just meows. So I'll say, and, and a cheese one for the cat. Oh, what's three? What's three meats? Uh, there are more than three types of meat in the world. Beef, chicken, and pork. I don't give a fuck. Just three meats on there. You're lucky. You're lucky. Draw those with you, or else I just put three dicks on it and call it a day. You pig. And she, she wouldn't mind. She, she wouldn't <laughs> mind. What, you think I wouldn't eat that? I would totally eat that. Can I get one with mushrooms on it, please? A pizza or a dick? <laughs> well, wrong voice. Um, <laughs> he asks you if you would like a pizza or a dick with mushrooms. I, I'm very, very tired. I think I'll start with the pizza right now. Okay. And he goes out. What comes later, it comes later. Yeah. The mm -hmm. dick. The dick will come later. Um, Probably. Yeah. Well... About 15 minutes later, a uh, a different waiter, an actual a human, comes out and he delivers you three pizzas. And I'm going to pretend he took a drink order, too. So he gives you whatever you ordered for drinks. And pretend that Dave ordered food? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dave actually ordered um, a kale and bacon salad. Okay. With ranch dressing. Hmm. So, assuming nothing happens during, while we're eating, like, conversations or anything, should we just say that we eat, and then, uh, yeah. okay. he'll take us to the professor? Okay, he will bring you to the professor. He guides you into, like, a, you went into what seemed like a receiving room, and 
you notice on one wall is a far better drawn map. But th what I did basically is what it kind of looks like. You can see Gate Plateau, you can see Entry Point, you can see the Stick River, you can see the Marsh of Moderate Inconvenience, you know. And a whole quadrant of it is just elves. That's all it says. There's like no, there's nothing else in that area of the map. It's just blank with the word elves. And up top, you know the mountain range. And above it, again, nothing except for a skull and crossbones. As if to imply, yes, as if to imply beyond here, you know, there are pirates or death or poison, or just something probably bad. That's what you get you the feeling. Mm -hmm. And HIV. Yeah. Oh, no, just HIV. Human virus. Oh, oh <laughs> my god. That's, a, that's the worst. The worst. That's the worst one. The whole Earth I is I know. It's gross. That's why the other planets won't come near. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Can we go nuts on that uh, map? <laughs> now, for our listeners, I drew the skull and crossbones and wrote good. something probably bad here. All right. Um, <laughs> Which I'm assuming thing. is it's that right? something up there. Remember, he did say. Remember what Ooh. what uh, Chorzo said. He'd been as far north as Flail, but not any further than that because it has a good way to get killed. Yep, because when you go up to the Death Mountains and you get past the Gorons and then you find Gin's secret lair, that's where yeah. the dragons are hiding. Alright. Always. Uh, Chorzo yeah. leaves you in this room, closes the door behind him, and then like you you have like a few seconds just to glance around, you know, you see the map. So you have kind of like you know, get a better idea of like just it was just the lay of the land a little bit. And uh then another door opens and a man just bursts into the room. He looks to be maybe in his early 60s, a human uh, with uh, curly gray hair and a set of uh, spectacles on his nose, because he has glasses, wearing a blue waistcoat and uh, basically a blue suit, basically. He looks finely dressed. And he bursts in and just says, <clears throat> Hello, hello, I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting. My name is Extellaris, I am the professor. Oh my god. The head of the welcoming committee and the foremost expert in planar travels and the places we all come from. It is my absolute honor to meet you. Okay, I'm uh, gonna extend my hand and to him and say, my name is Sky Walker. Ah, Skywalker, beautiful, wonderful, lovely name. For now. <laughs> and your companion, who are you? I'm just gonna nod at him and say, I'm Kornobi. He runs over, grabs your hand, shakes it vigorously. Kornobi, wonderful, lovely name. You are quite a fine-looking young lady. And he does the same thing with Dave. Very, very <laughs> enthusiastic. Uh, very interesting. But Dave is a very fine-looking young lady as well? No. He, he um, does not, in fact, say much about Dave's appearance. Aw, poor Dave. He's straight. Yep, the first straight character oh. in the Dungeons and Dragons campaign ever. Wow. <laughs> As he, he introduces to you, he says, oh, I, you, you, you must have so many questions, and I really wish I had time to answer all of them, but I am a little bit pressed. And he stops for a second, and it's almost like the... Um, for a second, it's like the, the facade kind of breaks, and it, like, it kind of looks like you realize that he's sort of being fake happy, and like, just his, his like look of worry like washes over his face, and like, it's like you realize it stops, and he jumps right back into the act. But it's like, it's noticeable, is my point. But I can, I, I can tell you several things. Oh, so many things you'd have to know. Please, is there anything you need to know? Anything you would like to know? Anything you're curious about? Well, I, I guess first, seeing seeing how worried he looks, I'll just ask, hey, you want to go out for a beer? You look exhausted. 
Oh, no, they'll be highly, 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 highly unprofessional of me. I have to make sure you get settled in. Okay, uh, second question. I pull out the stick and hand it to him. Can you tell me what this thing is? He looks at it and he goes, "It is it? Is it a stick? Did I get it right? Well, yeah, but there's something special about it. Now, just <laughs> look closer. I think it's magic. Can you tell me what it does? Oh, if it's magic, then better put it right back in that bag. So you don't know shit. I guess this means he's not a, a wizard. <laughs> okay, he's not that kind of professor. No, he's absolutely not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> he's a scholar, and he's a scholar yes. of, um, basically, his, he, he explains to you his, his field is the other dimensions that people come from, you know? But, and he, you know, like, at, he tries to learn about all the other dimensions, but, yeah, he doesn't know anything about magic. Okay, who would I go to to find out what this thing is? If hmm. it's magic. Magic, eh? Let's see, nobody up north has for sure. Um. There's no wizards in town. Without an entry point. Definitely not. Um. Too many gallops around, really. Maybe in Peck. But really, if you want to do anything magic y, you have to go to the elves. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, thanks. They're the anyway. ones who are big on magic. Okay, so. I'd like to see some elves. Hmm. I bet that's Kenobi's thing. And mine too, actually. Um, I'm gonna ask him. So seeing as you're a human, I assume you're not... You weren't born here, or were you? In this realm? Well, my grandparents were sent here for... Oh, what was it? Oh, yes, yes, triple homicide. Excuse me? They killed three people and they got banished here. Yeah, like most people. And, uh, well, they, uh, but they fell in love, they got married, they had kids who fell in love and got married and had kids and not with each other, of course, that'd be gross. And, uh... Yeah, we're in Australia. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm third generation. So, can you tell us where we are, what this place is called? Oh, uh, well... I mean, I don't mean the town, the, the whole... I guess world would be the word I'm looking for. Yes. Well, the word people use really is the world, but um, if you want to use it comparatively sure. speaking to other places, uh, the old Gallup word for it is Katoya. And uh, people get here, sent here, f get exiled here? Did I get oh, yeah. right? Yes, it's, it's pretty much the best place you can exile someone to if you never want to see them again. I've never heard of that. Is that a common... Well, uh, it, it takes a really a lot of magic to send someone here, so... You know, it, it's pretty much the uh, purview of the ruling classes in most places. So, there's no way to, to go back where you came from? Oh, no, of course not. No, no, mm. it's a one-way street, really. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll saying that we're the, we're the end of the drain of the universe. You know, where uh, everything ends up. The only thing that can leave here is a dragon. And you don't look like a dragon now. No, not most of the time. Not yet. Do you occasionally look like a dragon? Uh, in the morning, I sometimes... I suggest I not doing that. P people get a little bit touchy about dragons. It's the whole getting eaten thing. Gosh, they hate it. So, well, it looks like we're stuck here. And uh, this guy just starts like walking back and forth a little, like two steps forward, two steps back, and mutters to herself, like, I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here. And she starts grinning. And she just says quietly to no one in particular. I made it. And she looks really happy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look at Sky and uh, just say, what? Made? Made what? <laughs> what did we do? Don't worry about it. 
don't worry about it. Let's okay. um, so, let's get settled. So those elves, how do we find those elves? Oh, we don't have, don't really have diplomatic relations with them. They sort of they stay in their forests, and we don't bug them. They don't bug us, you know. They're the, you know, they don't get on with the gallops. Okay, so I'm gonna point at the map where the elves are and say, so, so if we just start walking in this direction, are we gonna run into them? Possibly. You could die of exposure first. Might start off to death. It doesn't look that far. Yeah, I mean, we're travelers. We've done stuff like this before. Really? What kind of travelers? Do you... Are you are a wandering adventurers of some kind? That's uh, absolutely yeah. what we are. Yeah. So, what did you do to get sent here, then? If you don't mind my asking, it's for the archives. Uh, some assholes thought we were really bad people. For some reason, I guess. I don't know. Are you? Uh, isn't everybody? I'm not. How would you know? My wife tells me. Every day I wake up to her and say, Honey, am I an evil person like our grandparents? And she says, No, you haven't murdered anyone. I think you should work on that. Well, you need to get more opinions. What? It's what we do. It's our, it's our morning routine. And she says no. That's one way to... Work. Okay, well, short story, I don't know what we did. Uh, some people got pissed off and they sent us here. We... We might have done some work for some unsavory people. And uh, we got sort of... We got caught in the crossfire, you could say. Ah, wrong place, wrong time, then. Right, that's exactly right. I know you got uh, your arm, you've got weapons. Are you good with them? Uh, yeah. Reasonably. What, are you looking for a demonstration? And he, his voice just like drops. He goes, no. I'm looking for help. Okay, uh, I guess we can do that while uh, trying to find a way to see those elves. What have you got for us? You help us out here. It's only fair. For us to return the favor. I got nothing better to do. He sort of, he sort of like a uh, motion to you guys closer. And he's, he's talking sort of a, a little bit of a hushed voice now. He goes, It's about my daughter. Yes. She hot? Yet, <laughs> she's my daughter. I try not to think of her in that way. You try. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> she... She is the light of my wife and I's lives. Our only child. And... Who'd she run off with? She is a model student. She is... Just... She is a paragon of virtue. I'm sure. And last night... Of course. She didn't come home from school. So she's gone missing. Yeah. So she ran off with someone. Normally, I would we would be able to call the, the town guard and have them do it, but they're out in the countryside right now, fixing a farm. Because that goddamned dragon decided it was hungry for cows again. Decided to burn down a farm with it, and one of the things we have to do is send the guard out to aid the reconstruction efforts. So there's only a bare minimum garrison here. They can't help me. Doesn't sound like you have many guards here. He looks up and goes, other than the occasional bandit and the flying, fire-breathing hell beast, there isn't a lot that you would need a guard from. And they can't really do much against dragons. But didn't you just say that this is a world full of murderers who were all exiled here? Oh, well, yeah. And you don't need anything to be guarded from. You ever try murdering a murderer? It's tough. It's almost like they know what you're doing. Okay, so, so with your daughter, do you have any leads other than she just disappeared one day? No. She was at school. Does she have a lover? No, she's too young for marriage. I'm not talking... Uh, never mind. 
Would she tell you if she had a lover? Of course she would. We're completely open with, us, with each other. We have no walls of secrecy in our family because lies and secrets Lead to destroy murder. lives. Well, they could do that too. Mm hmm. Okay. She was at school, and then after that, she was supposed to go see her friend Katie, and they were going to study for their midterms, and then she was supposed to come back. Katie said she never showed up. Talking gibberish. So we got to talk to this Katie first. Hmm. Sounds like. Mm. Can you tell us she sounds A, where Katie lives, and B, where the school is? Well, Katie, she lives three blocks down on the right, and 92. Three what? what? Three blocks down. Blocks. Yes, city blocks. Like, like these, like square things. What are you talking about? Are you from a simple plane of reality? Have you even got memes there? I think I, I'm starting to see what the issue is. <laughs> Can you tell us what a block is in inches? I don't know what those are. Can you eat them? You don't know what inches are. Inches are the only unit of measurement in the world. <laughs> Where we come from. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to ask you, from your accent. Yes. You sound like you're from uh, somewhere on the sword coast of Faerun. Am I right? Mm, yeah. Kenobi is, I'm not. Well, you were well, there I guess I lived there, there for, a, for while. a while, yeah. Yeah, that's right, you... You probably picked up a little yeah. bit of an accent. You know that place? Well, I told you, I... study the planes that people come from. And, uh... They haven't gotten someone from Faerun in almost a... almost a decade. That must be because all people in Faerun are, su are such good people that don't need to be sent here. Uh, either that or... Sarcasm? You know... The spell plague did a number on their magic community. True. Anyway, but there are people from Faerun here. Uh, maybe in the city, even? There's people from all over. Can't keep track of all of them. No. We have a registry. But... But that means if you studied Faerun at least a little bit, you... Maybe you can explain in, in terms that we understand? You know what? Draw us a map. Maybe that's yeah. easier. All right. He 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 grabs a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Draws a rough grid on it, and uh, puts a circle on the edge of one of the squares made by the grid, and writes "you." Then, roughly three squares down, he writes another circle. And he writes, Katie, let's just call it 26 Nut Lane. Mm. And then, off in a different direction, he writes another circle. And he writes, School. One School Street. Okay. He goes, That makes sense. I do hope you can do something to to help find my daughter. I, I would yeah, feel go horrible. Go shake down Katie for some information. Yes, yeah, so I would feel horrible if some, some bad person had done something to her. She's so pure, so innocent. She sh I'm sure she is. Uh -huh. We're gonna, we're gonna do our best. We've done this before. Yep. Partially I blame myself for having sheltered her so much. Oh, no. I'm sure you're an awesome father. I try to be I I never missed her ballet recitals or her soccer matches that's that's good I I think so now he's just looking wistfully off thinking about like just parenting and how mm -hmm. fun it is to be a dad <laughs> that's oh just, god this guy he's is... entered the dad zone yeah I'm just I'm I pick up the map and I'm going to start heading for the door because uh, if he's going to be lost in memories, I I'm just going to start on this quest. Okay. Um, are you going? I'm going to let you know what we find and 
This guy heads off after Kornobi. All right, and Dave follows the two of you. And okay. Dave knows what blocks are. Yes, he does. But he wasn't going to pipe up because you seemed very adamant that uh, they'd have to make sense. So he thought maybe... <laughs> it, that, it, everything has to make sense. Jeez. And also he's an NPC, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, okay. So can we have a, a huddle situation going on, bend okay. over the map and try it? Okay. Yeah, like, as soon as we get out the door and we're on the street, um, we'll look at the map. So you can, you, can, you can orient yourself really easily. Okay, so I'll look at the map and point you in the direction of Katie's house and say that way. Okay. Okay, why not? Okay, let's go in that direction. Yep. That's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's just Okay. Go. Katie's house, the first dungeon. Yeah, the, uh, the streets <laughs> aren't particularly packed, but they're not like really super empty either. Um, it's just sort of like an average middle of the day type amount of, you know, traffic you'd see. There's occasional, um, uh, cart being driven by horses. Uh, there's occasionally, you know, there's a lot of people walking by. True to form, you don't see any, uh, guards or anything like that. But then again, they are supposedly all up north helping that farmstead out, so, yeah. You Is re- anyone looking at us, or are we just blending uh, in perfectly? You are actually kind of being ignored. So we can get away with some stuff. Uh, you get the feeling people, especially in this town, are not only very used to uh, used to there being new people, but they're also, you remember what it was like being the new person, and nobody likes it when everyone's gawking at them, you know? It's like an unspoken rule among the people is that they like sort of just... You know, treat you like you're anybody else. No no one's wolf whistling at the sexy corn. Like, damn, look at no, that ass. No one is paying you guys any attention. Uh-huh. Like, you guys might get the occasional <laughs> side-on glance by, like, some horny teenager or whatever. But, like, you know, even they know that you don't stare at the new people. It's kind of like... Yeah, and I'm not yeah. paying attention to any of them, because uh, I'm yeah. focused on the mission, and I'm used to people looking at me. Mm-hmm. You're just going. Um, you get to uh, 26 Nut Lane. By the way, um, you, you never asked, and it was never mentioned, but I'm going to retcon that he told you his daughter's name was Greta. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I just realized cares? that never came up. <laughs> what her name Who is. Cares? I'm looking for a girl. <laughs> What's her name? Lady person. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I'm bad at this. It's it's been established, so... (laughs) It's part of the charm. Alright, so... um, You're you're at the door. You're you're in front of the door. It appears to be a single-family house. It is like most of the buildings in there, you know, made of wood. But it seems to be sturdy construction. You know, but we're definitely talking about... People who live here are not, like, poor. Okay, I knock on the door. Alright, um, a few minutes later, a man opened the door. He is in dressed all in uh, black with golden buttons on his, sh- on his jacket. And he has a uh, towel draped over one forearm. And he opens the door saying, Hello. Hi, uh, we are here investigating a missing missing persons case. We need to talk to Katie. Should I roll persuasion for that? Or? Yeah, because you have to know who the hell you are, and you are not coming here showing any sign of authority. So yeah, yeah okay. roll me some per- persuasion. Persuade the butler. 28. Take that, butler. He is instantly convinced. The butler did he's it. He's convinced that you are, in fact, the cops. <laughs> no, mm. we're the... You're we're... like plainclothes police officers. We're the president, yep. all of us. I'm in no clothes for a police officer. Yeah. I, I, I'm just wearing a chainmail bikini, and he thinks I'm a police officer. Yep, he thinks you are you are a sexy cop. That is your bikini new Bikini cop. Bikini cop, yes. <laughs> yep. You're from okay. the Baywatch. <laughs> that needs to be a show. <laughs> bikini cop. Chainmail bikini cop. Chainmail bikini cop, hell yeah. yeah. That would pinch a nipple. Mm-hmm. God. Get that little slut over here. <laughs> Alright, um, he immediately... I just, don't say that. No, he just like... Oh, oh, 
well, yeah, yes, sorry, officers, definitely. Um, uh, uh, um, allow me to um, please inform them, the, uh, the the man of the house um, uh, that uh, that you're, you're here. Hold on. Uh, the the man mm-hmm. who you can tell, obviously, a uh, a servant of some kind, a butler. He he bundles to the back of the room, and uh, rather quickly, uh, from a uh, another room, a man probably in his uh, late fifties, wearing a very nice tweed suit. He has a uh, kind of silver and black hair with a handlebar mustache. And he comes out and says, "Ah, oh, so you're the um, uh, you're the you're the policeman. Mm-hmm. Is this about Greta? It is. Um, we think that your daughter might have information. We'd like to talk to her. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I've tried, but she just keeps saying I hadn't seen her the entire day. You know, I can't get anything out of her. Maybe, maybe you can." Godspeed. And he, uh, calls out. Katie! The police would like to speak to you now! And, uh, a, uh, you hear a custom shuffling and a girl comes bounding down the stairs. Uh, she looks to be about 16. And she is just wearing a, uh, rather conservative dress. Uh, like you might wear to church or something. Mm. And her hair is in pigtails. Oh, God. And she just comes, she down and goes, Oh, Father, are these the policemen? I'll help them ever so much. Oh, Jesus Christ, these, these, these girls, they're in a sex cult or something. <laughs> and he goes, All right, you do that. I, I'm, I'm going to go and enjoy the newspaper. Let, you, know, you may let yourselves out when you're done. And he just walks out of the room. <laughs> He's gone. I'm going to start off by rolling insight to see if she actually seems as innocent as she looks or is she ner- nervous or something. Yeah. 12. 12. Not bad, not great. Um, first of all, I'll give you what uh, what Kornobi gets is, you know, first impression. She only, you only heard her say one thing, but she seems like a, a generic goody two shoes uh, schoolgirl. Okay. Nin- 19. You're almost certain she's a generic goody school, goody two shoe schoolgirl. Oh, that's boring. She seems yeah, well. very much like she just has never broken a rule in her life. So I shouldn't rough her up and yell at her and try to get some information out of her. It's entirely up to you. You are the police now, apparently. <laughs> but how you handle this, um, uh, this interview is up to you. Okay, I'll, I'll be nice this time, I guess. Okay, so, Katie, uh, we hear that Greta was on her way to see you the other day, and um, can you tell us anything else? Where she might have gone? Um, what might have stopped her from coming here? Oh, I simply cannot fathom what could have happened to her. I... Every day after school, she comes here, and we go over our, after our revision tables... And today, yesterday, I mean, she just didn't show up. I figured maybe she'd fallen ill, but she... Okay, well, so theoretically, if she was on her way from school to here, what could have stopped her along that route? Are there any dangerous alleyways or things that you try to avoid on that that walk? I, 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 I cannot even think of someone who would seek to... To harm a schoolgirl like us? Ask her about the lover. Uh, well, you can ask her too. We're both cops. But I don't have any persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Um, so, okay, um, so Greta, has she been seeing anyone? Do you know? Eleven. It's not great, but average. Do you mean courting? Yeah, uh, a, a boyfriend. Something like that. Are there any boys that she's interested in? She kind of, like, blushes a little bit at the, um, 
the nature of the question because she's a very innocent little flower. And An innocent she, little 16 year old flower who's already hit puberty at this point. And she just goes, Oh, oh dear me, no. I can assure you, she has not had any gentleman callers. D- d- this guy just, just looks like her arm, she's a little spasming a little because she's <laughs> re- trying really hard not to face palm. She's trying to control herself. She's so much, the character is so much fun. I don't know why. Like, okay, so, so Greta hasn't even talked about boys to you at all? Oh no. We talk about us, our classes, and we, we talk about going to church, but we do not talk about boys. Does she talk about girls? Um, no, not in any way other than maybe historical figures, I suppose. Does she have any friends beside you? And she sort of looks down again, and then she looks up and goes, Well, I suppose she does know a few other people. I mean, you meet people at school, don't you? It doesn't mean that they're, you know, the people that she hangs out with. They just make me she has lunch with them. No, I'm sure you're her best friend. That's not the issue. But you know, sometimes maybe you meet somebody on the street and you decide to head into the woods and uh, sacrifice a goat. You know, th- things that people do. And uh, mm. is there anyone, you know, besides you that she's been spending... And maybe an extraordinary amount of time with, like, outside of school, like something that would be noticeable. Like you would say, oh, those two people get along really well. Roll on perception. A perception machine. Sixteen. Mm. Which is still a good roll. Hmm. Um, when you're asking that question, she, you notice... She seems to fidget a little bit. She seems a little bit like she doesn't know what to do. Like she's trying to figure out how to not lie, almost. Okay. Like she like really like trying to like really plan. You could obviously planning like what she's saying and like she's really conflicted as to what she's gonna say. You know. Well, I'm gonna follow up Sky's question by saying it's okay. You can talk to us. We're cops, and uh, roll persuasion. 13. We also won't well, we won't tell anybody mm. if you got yourself into trouble or Ka- or Greta got herself into trouble. I, I, I haven't been getting into any trouble. I study ever so hard. No, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> no, we're, we're just concerned about finding Greta. That's all we want to do. Okay. The persuasion roll, which it was higher, it doesn't really... She's not convinced... Okay, um, I'm gonna, uh, just jump in here and say, if the person that she's been seeing is dangerous in any way, or, or you feel bad about them, you can tell us and we will, we will protect Greta, we'll protect you, and we'll make sure that none of you get in trouble. And I'll roll a <laughs> six. God damn it, I'm making it worse. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna play the good cop, I guess, and uh, cast good berry. So I've got some tasty berries, and I offer one to her. That's oh yeah, I got Mr. Fluffers in my arsenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a kitty, and I'm giving her berries that are magical, and I think it's like you eat them and you're um, full for a day. It's kind of like lamba spread. Okay. Mr. Fluffers is uh is on my shoulder right now. I'm going to take him and uh, I'm going to offer him to her and say you want to you wanna pet my kitty? You like kitties? It's Mr. Fluffers. Her eyes light up and she reaches out and takes Mr. Fluffers from you and begins petting he's him. He's also a cop. He's he's an he's, he's important member of our team. Mm-hmm. Instead of canine cop, feline cop. Feline yep. cop. Okay. All sorts of cops. Bikini cops and feline cop oh. teaming up to... Oh, 
He's ever so soft. I wish I had a kitten like this. And she's petting Mr. Fluffers. Hmm. Maybe if he, you know, if he ever ha- has kitties of his own, maybe uh, you can get one. Oh, I do hope Father would allow that. If he finds a, a lady cat, if it ever happens, I'll, ma- I'll make sure to, to let you know. Hmm. We would like to have a kitty for Greta, too, if only we could find her. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna just put the most disarming smile on my face. Oh, God. <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> you guys basically both get one more go with a Persuade. Mm. But you gotta role play me the pitch. You soften her up with the berries... And the kitten. Mm. Does that give us advantage? <laughs> it didn't, but now it does. I call for inspiration. <laughs> mm. Okay, um, so we get two more rolls on yes. one pitch. Yep. You first. We really just want to find Greta. We're not worried about you know creating any more trouble. We just want to find her. Anything you can tell us, anything at all, you know, anyone she could be with. Um, would be very helpful. 16 and 13. All right, I'm going to say, yeah, with the 16 at this point, because it lowers the difficulty because of the kitten and the berries. Mm. She finally just looks and shooks around and says, Please, do not tell father this, or he won't allow Greta over to study with me. Mm, yeah, we just want to find her. Her dad's looking of for Of course her. not. There's no way we'll tell him. Her and a few of the other girls, when they're supposed to be studying, have taken to go into a place. A place called the Fire Den. And I, I, I do not know what they do there. But when they return, they're not themselves. Okay, can you tell us where it is? Again, she's looking around furtively, like, as if, like, at any minute, God himself is going to bust her and send her to her room forever. Okay, I'm going to quietly pass her the map from before and let her just draw on it where the fire den is. As she's doing it, she's saying, Mind you, I've never been there myself. Uh I don't mind, don't quite like for the type of people who go there, not that I'm being judgmental. And she marks a spot on the map is actually... Only, like, very close to the school. It's not really very far from the school at all. And she goes, You have to go down that marked alley, and there's a door with a picture of a flame on it. Flame. All I know is you go in there. That's all I know. Okay. Can you just quickly tell us, what do you mean by they're different? They are not themselves. What does, oh. what does that look like? They look the same, sort of. They haven't grown legs or arms or anything. But their faces, their eyes are different. They they seem like they are here and they are not here. I do not know what it is. It is ever so troubling. Do they stay like that or do they get better? They get better, usually before it is time to go home. Hmm. Well... Uh, that's very helpful, so thank you. Um, we will let you know if uh, we find her there. Please, do not tell her that I told you this information. If she, no. she may shun my friendship. If she thought I was a, a, a backstabber. And she bursts into tears and goes running from the room. Okay, I hope she, she doesn't keep Mr. Fluffers. Actually, when she burst into tears, and she raised her her fan to her face and just dropped the cat. Oh, <laughs> it that's not it nice. didn't fall far. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. and Mister Fluffers is a very fit and agile cat. He just lands on his feet, walks over to you, and meows like, "Am I gonna have to jump all the way up there, motherfucker?" <laughs> Pick him up and put him back on my okay. shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to shrug and point at the map. It's like, well, we got a location now. Let's go. Are you guys ready? This could be... I hope I hope there aren't <laughs> bad people there. I don't like bad people. They're 
probably just girls there. As looks like. If they're bad people, we'll kick their asses. That's what we're good at. Yeah. Okay. Dave, you can, you can do all sorts of things. You're, you're a, a you're a, a, a very. Plot device. You can pick the locks for us. I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. All right. Okay. Let's see what we see. Okay, so um, unless anything interrupts us, we'll head to the location on the map. 